Bada bing, bada boom. You know what it is. Geeks are back. UFC Fight Night 70 at the Apex. We're running through picks and predictions. Main card, Nikita Krylov, 29-9, coming out against Ryan Spann, 21-7 in our main event. Let's get after it. From the bottom of the main card, working our way up, we have got Eric Gonzalez, 14-7, and a lightweight scrap coming out against Trevor Peak, 7-0. and This is going to be a good one. Trevor Peak. What a finish on the Contender Series. Dog. That's all I got to say about this guy. Trevor Peak, dog. I'm taking him in this fight. Eric Gonzalez hasn't impressed me enough. I think Trevor Peak, even though he's still rough around the edges, this guy's got heart for days. This guy's got chin for days. This guy's got power for days. I think Trevor Peak lands a shot, baby. Let's do it. Torres Finney, stand up. What you got, Goose? I'm peeking, and I'm picking Trevor Peak, fellas. All right. I think just absolute dog. If you need to sort of see that, go back, watch his contender series fight. It's out there somewhere. Definition of a dog. I mean, he goes out fighting a stud, an athletic beast in the octagon. He's getting beat up early, but walking forward, taking damage, and giving it back. Ultimately, who's tougher? He's getting into uh, what's the spot? What's the spot at in uh, Bikini Bottom, SpongeBob, the Salty Spittoon? That's where Trevor Peak goes to get a few beers. Welcome to the Salty Spittoon. How tough are you? How tough am I? How tough am I? I had a bowl of nails for breakfast this morning. <laughs> yes, so without any milk. Uh, right this way. Sorry to keep you waiting. All right, the salty spittoon, he is tough enough. And I think that Eric Silva, while he might have the recipe, he's he uses his reach well. He uh Eric Gonzalez, Eric Gonzalez, he uses reach well. He starts to tire out though. He can't do it for 15 minutes. And I think if anything, he's just gonna be stirring up the hornet's nest till Trevor Peak breaks inside and land a few hooks on him, and that's going to be all she wrote. I'm seeing end of the first round, early second round, KO for Mr. Trevor Peak in this one. Let's go. Goosey, nice take. Dano, what do you got? Eric Gonzalez, not bad of a fighter, but he is 14-7. and seven. We did see him get handled by Terrence McKinney, who uh, hopefully McKinney bounces back, but – um, it showed that Gonzalez got a little bit of holes in his game. And if Tapology is is up to date and correct, Trevor Peak is the number one lightweight in Alabama, brother. So he's got a lot riding on this fight. Hey, yeah. uh, woo, woo, woo. Even though this is an Apex card, Peak debuting, opening up a main card is a pretty big spot for him. Um, we always, I always talk about UFC trying to spotlight somebody. I think it's definitely peak in this fight rather than Gonzalez. So hopefully they see something that, uh, that favors peak. And, and so do I, I think this will be a scrap and peak thrives in scraps. We're three, and know, oh. front kick. What do you got? Give me Trevor peak coming out of a gogi. Like, uh, like you guys said with Torres Finney. So, um, you know, he's getting some good work in, and this boy, you know he's a dog. You guys said it, but um, Eric Gonzalez, he gets hit a little too much for someone like Trevor Peak, who's going to be really just a brawler and trying to hit the fuck out of you. So give me Trevor Peak, baby. Let's go. Let's land those Alabama bombshells. Alabama boy. Pop, pop. Let's get it. We're moving to the next one. Another big prospect here. This is a Walter Waite scrap. We got... Two Canadians stepping out. Mike Malott, 8-1-1 one one out of Niagara Top Team. Contender Series alum. Another Contender Series alum, I believe, Johan Liness, 9-1. This is going to be a really good scrap, man. I see Mike Malott, like, if you don't know too much about him, he was a striking coach um, for a long time. He, he trained a lot of really high-level guys to, to get their hands right. Um, he really knows what he's doing on the feet. And then, you know, he comes out in these little glimpses and he shows that his jujitsu is just is just powerful. Um, 
that contender series guillotine he hit on that guy was just ruthless. And uh, he's really strong, athletic guy. His brother plays in like the NHL. Uh, just great genes in this family. I, I see him a lot going a far away in the UFC. I think it's a good matchup for him. I think Johan Liness is, uh, you know, he throws a lot into all of his shots is what I'm going to say. He doesn't like to uh, pitter-patter. He doesn't really play the the tactical game. He's more of a, uh, he's coming for you. He's going to walk forward. He's going he's gonna to try to impose his will. I think Mike Malott's going to have a lot of fun in this fight. I think that he's going to be bouncing around. I think he's going to be able to really showcase to the people that, that world-class striking. He's been teaching all these other studs. And, uh, you know, the biggest problem in this fight is just going to be Johan Lanessa's strength. He's a big, strong dude. So he's going to be trying to push him up against the fence and whatnot. I have plenty of confidence in Malat's footwork and whatnot after seeing Johan's last fight. He might have gotten away with that one, keeping him in the UFC. That would have been his third loss in a row or something like that. Um, so I'm taking Mike Malat as the established, uh, meant-to-be-here UFC fighter. I think he's going to win this fight. I think he's going to win it inside the distance in style. Maybe early third sub. What do you got, Goosey? Maybe a knockout. No, I'll switch to knockout. Goosey, what do you got? I'm going to be on the other side here. I'm going to take a chance on the underdog. Ly- Johan Lionisi throw some bombs. Malat. Um we haven't seen a lot of him. He's been he's been quick and brief in his fights in the UFC, getting guys out, out of there. Uh but Mickey Gall. I'm not the most impressed with that. And Mickey Gall hit a few shots. I think Lionisi, a lot of power. I don't think he'll be able to get the grappling going. This is a shot on uh, him hitting the chin early in this one, but I definitely think it's doable if, as this fight goes on, I see him a lot taking over if that happens. But Johan uh, puts on a hell of a first round. Fire. Dana, what do you got? I'm with Goose. I'm going to take Johan in this one. I like his bombs. I like his uh, striking, even though Malai is a pretty good striker. I, I like Lioness in this one. His last fight against Darian Weeks, to me, proved that even if Malat wants to grapple, wants to try and get him to the ground, he can deal with it because I believe Weeks is uh, not the best on the feet. He's more in the grappling on the ground. So I think that Johan's going to be able to hold his own if that goes there. But if it does go the feet... I believe uh, some of those bombs will land. And Johan's only loss to Gabe Green. He hurt Gabe Green real bad on the feet. I believe he dropped dropped him in, a, in one of the rounds, um, but Gabe Green did bounce back. Uh, I think that Johan's definitely been improving. Striking's got to be getting better, and, and the power is always there. So I'm riding with Johan. Front kick, what do you got? So in this fight, I feel that... Uh... Johan's going to need a gas tank to deal with Mike. And that's something I don't know if um, I can trust, but I don't know if Mike has really been facing, um, like like Goose said, uh, Mickey Gall coming off that fight and then facing Johan. I don't really like that for Mike either. So I'm riding with the dog as well. Give me Johan. I'm trusting him to just crack him. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, he's got a good takedown defense. So give me that. Give me that. Give me the dog in this one. All right. We're taking Liness in a fight again with two Canadians. So we'll, we'll see a Canadian winner here. Oh, let's, Canada. let's get into the next one. We've got, uh, a uh, flyweight women's bout. Tatiana Suarez, haven't seen her in a minute. 8 0, uh, coming out against Montana De La Rosa, 12 7 and 1. I'm taking Tatiana Suarez. I'm not thinking too much about this. Tatiana Suarez is a very, very, very good female prospect. I don't know where she's been. I don't know if it was injuries or whatnot, but I think that she's like together right now with like Patchy Mix. And, you know, they've just been grinding. Like the, they, they're both, um, they're both just like very sincere, hard workers. Like, you know, just from social media and what I see, like they're always in the gym, like just improving and improving. And like, from what I'm seeing with patchy mix, like there's no reason why, why she's not improving the same amount 
Uh, so I think Tatiana Suarez, this is like her coming out party per se. I think she's going to come out here and do some serious damage. I think she gets a finish in this fight. So give me Tatiana round one. You know there's some value there, boy, baby. Fishman, what do you got this one? Yeah, uh, Tatiana, heavy, heavy favorite. I'm talking like minus seven plus. So uh, you're going to have to do a little play. And, yeah, just go uh, go inside the distance. Go for knockout or sub. You got to do something like that. But give me Tatiana. Goosey. All right. So, breaking this one down, Montana De La Rosa. Very tough. She pushes a good pace. Decent grappling. Uh, the stand-up isn't great. Tatiana Suarez, on the other hand, absolute beast. All right, and this was a few years back was the last time we've seen her. She was battling injuries, I believe. She's been off a while. Heavy favorite, always off of a long layoff. We'll, we'll throw a few question marks, a few little uh, added just questions in the mix, but it will, it will be kind of sad if she loses because it will be the fall of a great prospect, and I don't think that that happens. I think Tatiana Suarez comes out, gets it done, I-T-D, inside the distance. Dan, what do you got? Keeping it short and sweet, I like Tatiana Suarez inside the distance. Um, I think if you were to bet on her, it's got to be a prop, whether it's decision or inside distance. Like Fish was saying, line is very inflated. And she's been out for a while, so, you know, who knows with ring rust and who knows if if she has an off night. So, Tatiana's the pick, and I'm going to be riding inside the distance. All right, let's go. We're moving into the next bout. Heavyweight scrap, Augusto Sakai, 15-5-1. Coming out against Dante Mays, 9-4. and four. Haven't seen Dante since Hamdi, that Hamdi fight, which was very controversial in the decision. It went down to a split. Hamdi got the nod. It is now a canceled bout. Uh, because Hamdi got popped for some sheesh. And uh, that kind of puts Dante on a weird spot where he's like not coming off a loss and he's like coming off two wins and a and a canceled bout. Like weird spot for Dante. Augusto Sakai, on the other hand, coming in just about ass backwards. Uh, four L's in a row. He fucking needs this win. Like... <laughs> My boy needs this win. And um, I'm not going to lie. That's a big deciding factor in this fight for me. Augusto Sakai off four losses, four really good opponents. You can't really knock him, bro. At, at heavyweight and you see the names that he's losing to, it's fucking tough, bro. But you scroll a little bit further down, you see all the names that he was blasting through. And it seems like there's just like that little gap where it's like he's losing to like these like premier elite heavyweights and then anybody that's even questionable or below he's just running through so i'm gonna take that as my sign to bet augusto sakai in this fight i think that uh we're not not bet him but just side with him uh i think dante mays is taking a big step up in competition right here i think that if he can't get this fight to the mat he's gonna be in some deep shit uh so give me sakai to just like kind of out out level him just kind of show you know, that there's, uh, you know, there's levels to the game. So I'm taking Sakai. Daniel, what's your take? I'm taking Dante Mays in this one. And even though I hate to say it, kind of Augusto reminds me a little bit of an OSP where you were saying CEO. OSP kind of, you know, he was really good and he's kind of been just checked out in his last couple fights. And, and even though Augusto has been losing these big names, he just hasn't really shown up. Hasn't really looked too good in the losses. I know it's a weird thing to say, but he just hasn't really looked good in his last fight. You know, his his body, he's not a jacked heavyweight. He's kind of a, you know, f fluffy boy. So um, I just think Dante Mays, this is a big opportunity for him. Um, I could easily see this just being another boring heavyweight fight that they're gassed in the second round and, and someone wins a decision and I'm going to, land on the side of Don Tomes. For sure. Goosey, what you take? I think I'm going with Dante Mays 
in this one. All right, Augusto Sakai, obviously pretty solid striker. Um, the grappling, there's definitely some something to be desired there. You know, he he plays more of the finesse game, where his jujitsu is decent, but he can't really wrestle. His boxing is good. And he has shown power in the past, but now he plays more of a volume game. Um, the chin is, is I'm not going to say deteriorating because he's been fighting guys with a lot of pop, but the finishes are starting to add up for him. And he's going to kind of have to be uh, dodging raindrops in there. And I don't know if you guys have seen Augusto Sakai, big boy. I don't think he will be. Uh, dodging raindrops especially against Dante May's Lord Kong the big strong Kong um I think on the feet he's a little wild he he can hit you with some shots from some angles you don't see coming on the ground you see those deadly pelvis strikes he hit Josh Parisian with we're gonna play the clip um and then he's got, I mean, he, I think he can get it done on the feet, on the ground. All right. Personally, I see this going down a little second round ground and pound TKO, Dante Mays. What do you got, Fish? Yeah, this fight, uh, coming off of four knockout losses is rough, rough, like CEO said, but um i'm gonna th- you've got to think he's gonna f- he's i don't know is he checked out is he not i mean these these guys are roughly the same age um don tail uh he's got a little bit of height on him but um dude i mean you got reamed you got rosen striked and then you got a uh, dude just fucking a shit tour. The UFC was hand, handing him straight shit. Like, <laughs> he was just saying yes time after time. But what a dog. Um, He is slight favorite. Uh, Sakai is. <sighs> this one's tough for me. But, um, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to ride with Sakai. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Dude, I de- I I see what you're saying, but I mean, I you scroll down and you just look, bro. Like, there's there's the overreams that he. I mean, he got knocked out in the fifth round with a fight. He's probably winning, and then you know you got these three juice heads right here at the top of his freaking lineup sheet. Then you go down though, and it's like the level that he's at. Like, I feel like Dante Mays is more on a Lagoy Ivanov, Marcin Tybura, Andre Arlovsky, Chase Sherman. Like, these are the kind of that, that's the level that I see Dante Mays at, and I mean he's winning all these fights. So I mean. I think it's just going to be a – we're all going to find out right now if Sakai is a UFC fighter anymore or not because this is it, my boy. Let's do it. We're going to find out who who takes the spot on the sheet. It's going to take a Shambo opinion, which God knows. Let's move into the co-main <laughs> event. Andre Muniz, 23-4, and four, Brazilian, coming out against Brendan Allen, 20-5, and five, the American. I'm taking Brendan Allen. I'm going to skip the uh, the long, intricate um, layout here. I think that to beat Brendan Allen, you got to have pop. You got to pop him in the chin. That's how, that's the way he loses. The only way he's lost in the past, like, dozen fights is just getting chinned by a guy like Sean Strickland or just getting chinned by a guy like Chris Curtis. Andre Muniz, I will tell you one thing, does not have pop. And that is a guaranteed fact. This is a jiu-jitsu practitioner. Uh and I think Brendan Allen's good enough to keep it on the feet and pop him up. So I'm taking Brendan Allen. He's a dog. And I, I don't think that Andre Muniz is going to have anything to, like, really end the fight at a sudden moment. Like, I feel like you you got to have the ability to just end a fight to beat Brendan Allen. I feel like, you know, trying to dog him out and all that kind of stuff is, is really, really tough, tough way to go at that guy. He's a tough dude. Dana, what's your take on this? I'm on the flip side, and I kind of think Muniz can just end a fight. And I think when I think of this fight, I just see Muniz snatching something up, whether it's um, guillotine, 
Um, but I can also see Maniz going from guillotine and making Brendan freak out, and then he just snatches like an arm bar on the way down or something. Just Muniz is too good on the ground. I know the line's inflated, which I don't love because Brendan Allen is a dog. Um, but I just can't get that out of my mind. Muniz snatching some up, co main spot, big spot for him. Um, and I think he performs pretty well under the lights. So I'm taking Muniz submission. It's gonna be a banger. Fishman, what do you got? Yeah, with this uh this fight, I'm rocking with uh Muniz, Andre Muniz, but I love the placement of this fight. It's gonna be a scrap. Brendan Allen is going to make him scrap. Um and I just think maybe Andre could have some uh we're just going to really need to see the gas tank here cuz if Brendan Allen is not going to be an easy dude to submit but um I think Andre could still do it you know I think he could still submit him but it's going to take a little work and I think he's going to need to exert a lot of more energy to do it he could get tired but yeah I'm going to stay true to what my mind is thinking I'm going to just stay with Muniz Fire. That works. What do you got, Goose? We're going 3-1. I'm going to take Muniz as well here. Um, the fight that I keep thinking about is Jacob Malkoon versus uh, Mr. Allen in this one. And Malkoon was able to time and time again get him up against the cage, get him to the ground. Um, he did have a hard time holding him there, but to me, Malkoon is a kind of just a one-trick pony. He's a wrestler. He doesn't have a lot to keep you down. Muniz, on the other hand, has that nasty jiu-jitsu. Uh, pretty good wrestling. He's getting takedowns at a 40% clip, where uh, Brendan Allen is getting taken down at a 50% clip. You know, so you do the numbers there. Allen's probably going to find himself on the ground. There are levels to the jujitsu game. I know Alan's good. He can hold his own, but guys are having a hard time getting up and staying away from Muniz once he grabs a hold of him. Um, obviously, if Brendan Allen can keep it at range, his striking is better, but Muniz grappling is better. And I think the odds that he gets this one to the ground two or three times are pretty good. So I'm going to take Muniz in this one. All right, for sure. I'm definitely feeling this big athletic boy, but let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. We're going into the main event. Oh, this one's freaking. This one's a toss up. We got Nikita Krylov, 29 and 9, coming out against Ryan Spann, 205. He's 21 and 7. Man, I really want to ride Krylov because he guy, I've been a rider in the past and he's been, he's been putting on Ferda. Uh, but dude, Ryan Spann's just on some shit right now. And I cannot, I cannot bet against this dude. I cannot pick against this dude. His momentum is crazy and his mindset is crazy, bro. This guy, he's really up to something. I really like his camp, bro. Safe Sayud over there is just a mastermind. You saw what he did with Brandon Moreno. Man, dude, he's at the right spot. Ryan Spann's getting the right looks. He's getting the right work. And he's like clicking right now. This is a bad night to be Nikita Krylov. He gets hit. He gets hit. I've seen him wobble all over the place. He likes to fall over and shoot messy net. I could see this being a barn burner until Krylov is sleeping on the canvas. Do not sleep on this Ryan Span power. He's going to uh he's going to do some real damage in this fight, if you ask me. But uh hey man, Shambo's Geek of the Week, Krylov. Don't take Shambo's Geek of the Week too seriously. <laughs> William Knight last week. <laughs> <laughs> all right so this might be my shambo geek of the week just fade pick but no nah, i'm just kidding i think ryan span is putting it all together i think he's going to be a future challenger title challenger what do you got dano i like ryan span and it hurts me to say it because he absolutely demolished one of my favorite fighters in dom Reyes, and it had me his last fight had me being like Chris Weidman's dad when uh, <laughs> when Reyes was standing there and I was going, he's still our boy. Um, 
flatline Dom Reyes and he looked damn good doing it. And I just, like you said, man, Krylov's good. I've been a fan of Krylov in the past. I've even bet on Krylov, but it's tough to go against Ryan Spann and he's riding momentum right now. So um, I'm going to hop on his bandwagon for this one. Interesting to see if this fight gets past like the second round, just to see what Ryan Spann looks like. Uh, Cause you know, Krylov ain't going to stop. What do you got front kick? I want to hear an interesting take real quick is uh span sub. And it's because, um, so he's been getting some clout for his hands recently, but he is a threat on the ground. And Krylov, um, I feel that, you know, shoot. one of these takedowns, one of these, in one of these exchanges, like, Span could just grab the neck, bro. He could grab the neck. He could end it. And, um, but yeah, it's this a dude that's really finding the hands and has the ground experience and can end it i love that it reminds me of cheeto um as, so he's just becoming dangerous everywhere and i love that and i love to see him putting more effort into his career and more focus into training and stuff like that so let's get it let's get it goosey wrap it up i'm on the other side i'm taking cry love here um i know span obviously looks dangerous with the hands Krylov hittable, but he's only got knocked out once, and he has fought some absolute dogs. Uh, Span does wrap up a nice ghillie. It might be Ferda in this one, but I think Krylov's going to be able to dog him out. They both like the firefight. Krylov doesn't go out. Span has been chinny. All right, watch the Anthony Smith fight back. A few other fights, dude gets wobbled, and he starts to panic. Um, And... If you're betting span, you're probably going off an early finish. I think Krylov can make it last for five rounds, really dog it out in this one. I like the durability. I like the conditioning of Krylov. Obviously, span is going to be dangerous early, but I'm willing to look past that. All right. If Krylov loses, it is going to be early. I think in a firefight, though, Krylov's a wild man, and I think he gets it done in this one. That's a good take. I will say that, you know, like calculating in my mind a little bit, I think that that Ryan Span sub might be the death of him. You know, if he starts trying to play that, that, you know, submission game and, and pulling guillotines on those takedowns, you know, and if he doesn't get them, you know, he could be exerting a lot of energy and just flat on his back. And you do not want to be entering the third, fourth round with a guy like Krylov coming at you full speed. So definitely interesting. I definitely think that a Krylov decision's live. And if you want to hedge it with like a Ryan Span early KO, that's definitely a live look. That's the picks and predicts. Anybody got anything you want to throw in before we shoot out? Go watch the Jasmine just shoot a vicious interview. It's a fire one. She's fighting this week. Shambo gets ripped. All right, those are the picks and predicts. Thanks for tuning in. Stay dialed, fellas. Let's go. Johnny Jones next week, baby.